Coming on a little early as usual. I'll let you watch John in action as he's getting himself prepared to grind the meat here. <laughs> All right. I like to come on a couple minutes early, give everybody a chance to find this, and then we'll get started right at 10 o'clock. It's 9.59 now. Woo! Exciting, exciting stuff. I'm kind of excited that I don't have to be the one standing in front of the camera this week talking. You know, there's always a story. You're still going to be talking. Yeah. I'm going to sit over there with a cup of coffee. No, you're not sitting over there all the time. I'm going to sit over there with a cup of coffee. So, you know, there's always a story, and I don't, I didn't have a chance to tell John my story, um, but uh, I went to bed super early last night, like, and then I woke up at 1.30 this morning. And you've been up since? And I've been up since. Yep. So, I'm glad that you're doing this and not me, because I think I would probably just be sitting there drinking coffee the whole time and not really saying much, so... <laughs> All right, we got one person tuned in. Oh, Kim, good morning. Hi, how are you? It's good to see you again. Oh, Elizabeth, whoa, it's been a while since you've been on here. Yay, I'm excited. I hope you're feeling better. Got all that stuff done yesterday. The market was good. It was slow, but it was good. Uh, we had some new vendors. You and I were talking about that. Uh, we had a cidery or I guess a orchard and cider and they make apple wine so i understand uh yeah that's about it all right it is 10 on the nose we'll wait another minute here um just to give people a chance to tune in in case they're going to i know there's a lot of things opening back up now there's like yard sales and Flea markets. I'm at the Cutler Flea tomorrow. For those of you who are in Binghamton or the Binghamton area, I will be setting up and vending there. I'm excited by that. It's a new venue for me. All right. Are you ready, Farmer John? Sure. All right. So we're going to get started. It is 10.01. Good morning, Kim and family. Good morning. Okay. So this week, I have a treat for you. I know. I'm always like, hello, I'm talking to you. I have a treat for you guys today. So, if you missed my story, I woke up at 1.30 this morning and I've been up since. So, it's probably a good thing that John has somehow knew that today was the day to come help me out. Yeah, I was partying until maybe that time last night. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm like, I was definitely like getting up. I actually, um, our Funky Bunch uh, friends on Instagram, that group that we're a part of, they were texting. Some of them were texting at 1.30 in the morning, and I'm like, listen, got to stop that stuff. It wakes me up. All right, so anyway, um, this is my friend John. He is uh, Farmer John. He has a little homestead on um, Triple H Farm, yep. and uh, his wife Diane is of the apron fame. She makes these lovely aprons for me. And um, he's going to show us how to grind our own meat. So the backstory is I shot a deer last year. If you haven't been tuning in that long, then you might not know that was my first deer. And I have some meat that needs to be ground. And I thought, well, let's just do it. And then I thought, well, even better, let me be really lazy and have somebody else do it for me. <laughs> so John's coming in. He I was is volunteered. <laughs> you were volunteered, definitely. Um, so he is coming in. He is, I would say, like a meat guru. I mean, that sounds that's kind of recent. Yeah, but you're like really into it. You know what you're doing. You do your research. You like your cast iron. Mm -hmm. You know, so it just makes sense that John would do my work for me by yeah. grinding the meat. So <laughs> I'm going to volunteer. You were. You <laughs> totally were. You keep saying that. You were totally. All right. So I'm going to step away from, you know, the action for just a second and I'm going to let John take it away. Okay, so I, we did a little pre-work already. Um, she had a roast, um, not a roast that you would cook complete or anything like that. It was kind of when you're butchering a deer and they butchered the deer here on the property. So you always just keep the spare chunks um, and the roasts that, like I said, aren't, you know, aren't oven roasters or you know, you're not going to cook full and you, you cut them up. So the meat's pretty frozen. Um, it grinds better when it's cold. Um, so I chopped it up this morning, 
for into grindable pieces, which is again a lot easier. I'm not going to bore you sit here and cut meat. So um, again, I did say it is frozen. So when you're grinding meat, some grinders are all metal. This one's plastic. I actually have the same KitchenAid one at home. So the grinding plate, a little far away, the grinding plate and the, the grinding wheel are metal. So you'd like to cool those two in the, in the refrigerator just so they're cold because metal is friction and friction is heat and you don't want heat on raw, mat, raw meat. So, so that's all cold. That's cold, meat's cold. Um, we're gonna cut for venison, since venison's very lean, we're gonna cut that with pig fat. So where did you, you got that at the so local butcher? Or? I get my meat from, this is what the pork fat looks like. Um, I get my meat from Shea Farms down in Long Eddy. Um, so they don't have a website or anything. So if you're interested in local meat, um, I actually just picked up our pig. Yep, yep, we split and a pig, yep. We split a pig, and so I just dropped that off yesterday at Bon Diane's, and um, it was a lot of meat. Or yeah. like, and it, we got a half pig because it was the same amount as a whole pig that we normally get. Um, so Shea Farms, if you want their information, um, just send me a message and I can get that to you. Um, they don't have a website or Facebook or anything like that. So I can give you their phone number. So. Speaking of that meat, after I came home from work yesterday, I was all excited. So I went right to work. I started making some rubs and my, I make my own barbecue sauce and uh, I'm when I leave here today, I'm going to go put those ribs right on the smoker. So, I saw you doing that. So and I was like, that pig's oh, already going to like, start getting eaten today. I don't so. think that that's from my ground meat. I wonder if that's from <laughs> the pig that I just dropped off. Yep, yep. So back to back to the venison. Venison is very lean. Um, if you're grinding beef, like if you buy your own, like some people, um, you know, if you buy your meat, a lot of people are buying their meat local, um, locally right now from local farms. Mm -hmm. um, so if you buy your own meat, you know, say you bought a quarter of a cow or half a cow and it didn't come pre-ground, um, you could do it, your, do it yourself. If you have a KitchenAid, these things are awesome. Um, this grinder actually works very well. Um, so the beef meat, it has the fat content in it. You don't have to cut it. So the venison, like I said, it's very lean. That's where the pork comes in. So we're going to cut the pork fat into the venison about 80-20. You can put it more, you can put it less. Um, really depends what you do. Personally, um, the deer that I shot this year, um, I ground my meat when I was gonna eat it. So um, I was gonna make burgers. So I took, you know, I when I when I butchered my deer and packaged it up, I had, you know, written on it that this meat's gonna be ground beef. So I knew I was making burgers with it, so I actually cut it with bacon. So I have a bacon, venison burger with you know the bacon built in so it, it it works as a binder um so i didn't have to add anything to it um we did venison meatballs my wife you know she makes excellent meatballs mm -hmm. but we didn't add any fat to the meatballs because she used different things as the binder whether it be the breadcrumbs or the egg so really it depends what you're doing this meat's just going to be your basic ground meat for yeah. I wanted to do it just, yeah, mm -hmm. right, because I just want to have it done. Yeah. And I want to have it in the uh, in the freezer, so if we want to make a meatloaf. Make a burger, make a meatloaf. Exactly, yep. it's yep. just ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing with the venison, again, the fat that is in a deer, um, you try to trim off. Um, deer hair. Deer. <laughs> he was just picking out deer hair. The, the deer fat, the deer fat doesn't render as well as pork fat or beef fat. So when you cook it, it's not as good. So... That's part of when I was trimming the meat in there. I tried to trim as much as I can off. It will grind. Um, you just don't want to, you know, grind a venison chunk with a whole piece of fat through it. It's just, it's just not going to taste good. It's not going to grind good. So, um, with that said, I mean, what we're going to do, we'll start grinding it once um, on a coarse, on a coarse plate. Um, if you're doing beef, again, a, a lot of you probably are going to do beef. If you're going to do your own ground meat, um, do it once in the course, the course plate, and take it out. Then put your it, uh, most grinders come with two different plates. You'll put the fine plate on it and do it again. Um, we'll pr you usually grind your meat twice. Um, this one, since we're cutting it, I'm going to grind this once with the course, grind it again with the course with the fat in it, and we'll we'll take a look and see how it looks. Um, 
we may grind it a three uh, a third time. So um, with that, I use you know you want to start out with the bowl that you're going to put the first cut into, and then put a clean bowl under it because you're going to be transferring it with the fat and and the and the ground meat. So. And I was thinking um, not only because I wanted to have my ground warming <laughs> and ready to go, but I was also thinking that like sometimes people will like find a good sale on something oh, yeah. and like a cut of meat, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. But you mm -hmm. can always grind any type or cut of meat. I would I especially would especially beef. Yeah. Um, you know, beef because it's easy because you don't have to cut it. You know, if you're not a hunter, or you know, if you, you know, a lot of people have friends who are hunters and. You, know, they you, get, you, you get meat. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if they give you a roast, then you're like, man, how am I going to cook this venison roast? Um, grind it. Yeah. You know, grind it. Um, like I said, I, I made my own burgers. Um, and I cut them with bacon. They came out really good. Um, Kristen said before about my cast iron cooking. I found that a new love for it this year. Uh, just my grandmother always cooked on cast iron, and it kind of brings that nostalgia to me. Um, and my wife's appreciative of me cooking now because I'm actually cooking now. <laughs> um, and then, you know, between the cast iron and, and my new love of smoking meat, um, it's, uh, she's, she's happy because it's less cooking for her. So, <laughs> but um, if you want, we can start grinding some of this. I don't know if the, if the noise, how the noise is going to transfer over. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Like, they, they're pretty used to it, though. Okay. Um, if they've tuned in before, they know noise and if you have a kitchen aid um depending on which model you have um look up online what they suggest to run your grinder at um you can usually hear the speed like that's obviously way too way too low um so this one will probably run at like a four because that way you'll hear it yeah they always like to know which uh, they like to which, um, and this is, you know, she has the pro model here. Oh, so, because I'm professional. Professional. And I'm faking to be a professional. Oh, Diane says she's happy that you're <laughs> helping with the cooking. And I just, I wasn't ignoring you guys earlier. I forgot to set up my iPad because, you know, sometimes I don't get my uh, comments over there, but today they're coming in. So I just, I have those over there. Diane's happy that John's doing a lot of the cooking. So, this is a comes with this pusher, use it because you want all your 10 digits. Um, Look at that, mate. You don't have to push hard. You don't want to overwork it. Yeah, and it's just an attachment, to, you know, so it's only held on there by that little, the little uh, screw thingy there. So, yeah. And that's a very technical term, screw thingy. Screw thingy, yeah. yeah. It's, it's in the handbook. It is, totally. I, I read the handbook beforehand. So you, I mean, you hear it. You don't want to overwork it. Um, and like I said, the meat, when it's, you freeze it, put it in the refrigerator overnight if you're going to do it the next day, because you don't want it super soft, you want it hard, because it'll it'll push through a lot easier, it'll grind a lot, a lot smoother, and again, it'll stay cold, because you want your meat to stay cold, you don't want, because you're going to probably refreeze this again if you're not just going to cook it right up again. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing, like, um... I didn't really think about it was like thawing, you know, yep. it's, it's fresh, then it's thawed, or frozen, then it's thawed, and then frozen again, which you don't really want to do, yep. but and that makes sense. You know, you trim it into small pieces, because the hole is probably only, you know, the hole is only a little bit bigger than that. So you don't want to be forcing chunks right. in. You want it to go easily. So it's going way better than any time I tried to grind my own meat. And I didn't know, actually know, because um, I really didn't read about it. Um, that you should grind it twice. Oh yeah. Yep. If not because, three times, depending on. So we'll do a couple more pieces and then pull it up so they can see okay. it. Um, see what it looks like on the first grind, and then the second grind. We'll do maybe like a, just a little bit more. Oh yeah. So and the second grind actually will get everything mixed in again better, especially with the fat. Okay. So that's why we may do this a, three, a third time. Okay. All right. So let's see if you can uh, I just want to ask everybody how their week was. You know, I always like to find out how everybody's doing. That's usually what I'm asking them whenever I am uh, 
Go look at that. I don't want to pick it up with my hands, but can you see? I'm going to pick up one little, see how big that is? It's really coarse. All right, it's looking good. Um, so I don't think I have any stories for you this week other than I woke up at 1.30 this morning and I've been up since. Um, so it's a good thing John's here doing this. Um, I'm trying to think if I had any good stories. I don't think I had any good stories. I had a birthday last week though. Did you know that? How many of you knew that? <laughs> I had a birthday. I did not want to have a birthday though. We had ice cream though, so that is an excuse oh, for ice cream. Yeah. Is good. That's right. So Diane made this apron for me for my birthday. And then I met uh, Jeff and I met um, John and Diane over and we had ice cream for my birthday. So that was good. But I did not want to have a birthday. All right, let's see. All right. That's a big chunk. We'll, we'll trim that one down. All right. Just because you don't want to force it. You don't want to overwork your machine. You obviously pay a lot of money for those. So. Right. And then, you know, everything in there is metal, but it's only hanging on that little piece. So yeah. you just gotta treat it kindly. So it'll keep, it'll keep grinding all. I mean, good morning, Rick. How are you? You're just tuning in at the right time. We are grinding away, and we're on our first grind. We're going to do three grinds, we think. <clears throat> Let's see how it goes. So we, um, I think um, whenever I dropped off the meat, I don't, I'm sure you and Diane talked about this, but it was a lot of meat and there was a lot of big chunks of meat, yeah. big hunks. Yeah. So we've, uh, we've got meat for a while. I'm excited. We usually get our pig in um, April and because of uh, the shutdown and everybody buying, um, you know, trying to get as local as possible, which is great. Those of us who, uh, weren't so quick on the draw there and ordering our meats, ended up having to wait till July to get our meats, but it worked out okay. So we're good to go. Got it in the freezer, got lots of sausage. Although weren't you talking about wanting to make your own sausage or something? Uh, I'd like to, I have, I again with the research, I want to look into a little bit more because I want to make sure it's good. Yeah. Um, and just, did you want to do um, venison or just any uh, kind? Anytime. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I plan on, I plan on doing you know, a few more deer again this year. Um, again, you know, we like to, as you do, and probably as many of the viewers do, we try to know where our food comes from, either buying yeah. local or hunting. Um, and, you know, you follow Kristen. Uh, we were the ones who, you know, she came over and when we were butchering some of our chicken, chickens that we did this year. And uh, I'm not sure I told you about that. I'm mad at it. <laughs> uh, Guess what, people? I butchered some chickens. I didn't kill them, though. God killed them. I couldn't do it. But, but you learned. I learned. I've never um, been that uh, involved in the process before. And um, the first couple were hard and then you just kind of like, you know, you get into it and you just do it. Um, the smells a little overwhelming. Um, and then, but I think we, you guys had a good system going. So I think that helped too. Yep. And uh, Dr. Beth is on here. She says she's a little, little late, but we, doesn't matter. Hey, we're man. here. Uh, oh, Elizabeth says, uh oh, 40, uh uh, girlfriend. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. I like 40 didn't bother me. I was I was kind of excited to turn 40. I'm not so happy about this one. Alright, so this is done. So the first grind's done. Um, I held some stuff back that either had fat strains or like I said with the medicine you just don't want that. It's not gonna grind good. Everything in here grounds pretty really good so good. far. It looks so, really good, you guys. So we'll let it push that a little bit out. And we'll see how this fat cuts. I don't know if I'll need to trim it down a little bit more or not. So, we'll see. So, put our new bowl under there. All right. Oh, yep. Yeah. Can you guys see that? It looks really good. I hope you guys can see that because it's like really nice and red and it looks really good. 
So what I'm gonna I'm gonna send through a couple of the pieces of fat first, just to see how it grinds. If I'm gonna need to trim it down anymore, um, just due to fat, it's got a little bit of meat left in the grinder still, um, and we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, I I always did my meat as I was gonna eat it. Um, if I did grind, I guess see. Yeah. See, it'll cut. Yeah, that's yeah, that's gonna work really good. That looks good. That that looks like the fat. Like when you buy an 80 20 you know, ground meat at a store, it's going to look just like that. Because that's what we were trying to get to, was we kind of eyeballed it a little bit, and we were trying to so, get to an 80-20 mix. Yep. So now when you're mixing it, um, you know, you're going to, a handful of beef and, and a piece of fat, you know, just so it gets a good mix. And that's where the third, that's where the third grind may come in, if, if it looks a little lopsided. But you could always mix it, mix it in the bowl. Um, you're going to shrink wrap this. Uh, yeah. It or, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we vacuum seal yeah. our stuff, so we're gonna do that. I'm yeah. gonna um do the comments. Um, so Beth says 50 rocks. I'm not quite there yet. I want to take your word for it, Beth. I'm hoping <laughs> that I am as in good of shape and as on it as you are whenever I get to that milestone. I'm not feeling it right so now. So the ground pieces you do have to push in because they'll pack in there. Um, okay. So that's when the pusher. Really yeah. See what that like where the fat mixes in. It looks so good. I I'm, I know you guys can't see that like what I'm seeing. It looks so good. So, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some of this back in there. Actually, yeah, it's coming out good. I was gonna I was gonna grind just the fat and then do it, but it, it's coming out good. Okay. So. We will we will grind this a third time though. Okay. Just so it you know with and not change the bit though. Oh okay. We're gonna do it all in the course. Okay. We'll do it all in the course together. Because that way everything will mix in one more time. Okay. Before we package it. Okay. That so. looks really good. And the nice part about this, like you said, it, it'll be packed and ready to go. If you want to do burgers, right. they're, they're done. Yeah, Where, and then you can like package it however you want to. Yeah. If you want like a pound or two pounds or something, you know, in between or not as much or yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. Like I've done my own meat before, like I said. I just haven't done the second uh, grind and I haven't mixed it with anything. But I'm like, it's kind of exciting how quickly it is going. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're not doing a ton, like you said, nope. a couple pounds or whatever, but yeah. it's going really quick. Hope you guys can hear me. Sometimes whenever I stand on this side, it doesn't pick up the audio as much, but I'm hoping that because I'm not moving with my back to you, that you guys can actually hear me. Maybe you don't want to hear me. I don't know. Maybe you're tired of hearing me. You just want to hear Farmer John over there. <laughs> the, uh, the second grind makes it finer too, so it, like when you do make things with it, it'll hold better. Okay. So cool. that's why the second grind is important. This is awesome. That looks good. You got fat coming out of there. So when you're making burgers, you're going to call us and we'll come over. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so. No, I'm just kidding. Of course I am. Plus we have, um, we, uh, Diane and I, whenever we were dividing up the meat yesterday, we tried to do it as equally as possible, but there was like one huge, Diane, do you remember, was it like a ham or like a picnic roast? Or, it was huge. It was, like, was it that or was it the pork belly? No, you guys got the pork belly. Oh yeah, I have, I have to figure out what, what we were doing that. Yeah, so. <laughs> we were talking about that this morning. I took the, I took all the fat and Diane and, John and Diane took the uh, pork belly. But there was this one huge ham, and so oh, we we decided that is humongous too. it was massive. So we decided that that would have to be a joint cooking. You know, like yeah. whenever we get ready to um, eat that, then you guys obviously are invited, and whoever else, you know. But that way, it's yeah, that's going to be the small army. So yeah, that's actually you know um, whenever we started the friends gathering back in the fall, mm -hmm. um, that's what it started because we had the hams and stuff left over from the last pig. And we were like, we're never gonna eat this. So we decided to start the friends gathering. And that's kind of where it took, Jeff was like, we need to get rid of this meat, but we don't want to waste it or whatever. So um, it worked out really well. Yeah, we'll do this one more time because that way you don't get clumps of good fat mixed in. Okay. 
we'll mix it up, we'll mix it together in the bowl. We'll grind it one more time and be done. All right, that sounds good. We're doing good on time. We're 25 minutes in. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it goes quick. Uh, yep. No more comments yet. Ah, and I just get to sit back. I should have brought my coffee. I already, I already had two cups this morning. <laughs> I finally got up at 3:30, and I came downstairs. And, you know, the kitchen was in a state of disarray. So I did that. And I did some vlogging stuff. And then I made some products because I'm going to be in Binghamton tomorrow at the farm market. It's been a full productive day so far. I can go back to bed as soon as we're done. I can call it like a full day. Go to bed now and you'll be up at 1 I know. I will. That's no good. That's no point. I will be um, not on top of my game for tomorrow for sure. That's the case. That looks good though. Yeah, it does. We're almost done too, so we'll show yeah. them uh, what it looks like. So it's really good. It looks like it's a good 80 20 mix, which is what we were shooting for. Yeah. Definitely. I like it. I like it. Thumbs up. I think we should have more guests on. <laughs> <laughs> so I just stand here and talk the whole time and watch somebody else work. I love it. My hair is a mess, though. I was like, I can see. So, like, my iPad, as you guys know, if you've tuned in before, my iPad's always, like, slightly delayed. So I can always look over and see what I just did. And I looked over, and I'm doing this to my hair because I could see it in the corner of the uh, camera and how horrible it looks. I'm not the star of the show today. Look at that. I just wear a hat on my hair. <laughs> All right, so once this is done, we'll... Swap that and that'll be your final grind. Nice. That looks really, really good. Uh, fingers crossed that my son gets a deer this year. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I'll be honest with you. Just like the chickens, like I had never killed anything before, like literally, like, you know, bugs or whatever. Yes. But mm -hmm. like, you put your own bugs? I do butcher my own bugs. Um, <laughs> they're very easy to do. So um, let's show them this really yeah. quickly. Can you guys see? Like this is, I don't want to hold it up too much again, but I don't know if you can see that. That's a really nice mix. And so it's going to look even better uh, whenever Farmer John sends it back through. Yeah. So, so this will be the final grind. That way, just, you know, you're putting in the first grind, then you're putting in the fat. So you're going to have clumps of good fat mixed in. So now we'll just do it. A couple of good mixes in the bowl, send it through, and that'll be done. Um, and whatever you're making, you know, if you're making meatloaf for burgers, whatever it may be, um, you're gonna mix in your your uh, your spices and you're gonna mix stuff it like again. that. Yeah. 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 So. So um, I was just doing that. Yeah, I was gonna go back and say um, I had wanted to get a deer, like, but in in theory, I'd wanted to get a deer, right? I'm like, okay. But whenever came the reality came about, it was like, I don't know if I can. And so it literally was like the last day of rice, rifle season last year. It was December. And it was like, we're going hunting. And I'm like, okay. It's like now or never. And we sat there for like an hour and a half and saw like one deer running through. And then all of a sudden, this deer comes walking like literally directly in my path. And I shot it, and I wasn't sure that I could because it's such a, it's, yeah. it's a huge deal to take the life of animal. an animal. So, um, yeah. Well, when, when you do, though, and when you eat it, and, you know, after it's butchered and everything, like, you appreciate it more, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And, like, we did, we saved everything. Like, I have everything from that yeah. deer. Um, the hide is being tanned. I was wanting, I wanted to kind of do it myself, but... Um, we have one of our guides who actually does taxidermy. So if you need a good taxidermist, let me know. Um, and he's doing my skull for me, and he's doing uh, the hide. So I'm, um, you know, we use like we saved everything. Yeah, that's and that's the thing. Just like just like we did with the chickens. Absolutely. You know, you make the stock. You yes. Know, you know, from from the feet and the and all the you know, the other guts that you don't use. Yeah. Or the, the usable guts. You know, yeah. You know, the hearts, the livers, and how many do those regular? Yeah, but yeah. you can like definitely, yeah. right, you can do all of that, you can make stock with it, you could even like um, feed it to your, you know, like it's really good for your cats and your dogs oh, and yeah. stuff like that, so. Yeah, um, when, I, um, when I small game hunt, 
um, you know, when you go home and you got the pheasant or whatever, I always gave the gave those organs right to the right to my dog. Yeah. You know, she helped get it. So. Yeah. So it's like it's just using the the whole thing, which is what we're about. Um, we want to make sure that we're. Yeah. No waves. No waves. Um, yeah. See that? See now with the third grind, yeah. it gets it everything looks in. Really it looks. Good. It looks store bought. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. But it's gonna be better. Store yeah, and I mean, if you're if you're not processing a lot of animals or or grinding rather, um, these kitchen aids, if they're worth right. the money, one hundred percent. Right, and you know you can. I should. I meant to bring in my. Um, I have a hand crank mm -hmm. uh, that just attaches yeah, to the table too, and yeah. stuff. So yeah, yeah. but I, which would be, I guess, if you're like really getting into like processing and grinding and stuff like that, is whenever you want to move up to yeah. something like that. But for like. The little bit of deer, the deer meat that you're going to get, or you know, like the the beef that you're going to get, that you're going to grind. Um, especially if you're just doing yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they they offer um, another one up of this. They, okay. they offer an all metal, um, a, a better one. Okay. But but again, I mean, for for the home user, if you're not processing multiple animals a year, or grinding multiple animals, right. a year, it's fine. I yeah. mean, you know, this is a couple pounds of meat. Right. And we're gonna do it less than an hour. Yeah. And and I always tell them that like this is taking us longer because we're talking. And yeah, we're for like sure. Doing this and we're explaining yeah. stuff. And whenever you're in your kitchen, you can pretty yeah. much guarantee that whatever we're showing you is gonna be cut in half. Yeah. Because you're just gonna be doing it. So yeah. Just checking our. And it's all on the pre. It's all on the prep work too. You know, if you're, if you, you know, um, Kim was saying she was looking for a deer. Yes. You know, if you process your own deer, if you butcher your own deer. And you're going to put away all your scraps, you know, to grind and everything to the side, label them. You don't have to do it right then. I mean, butchering the deer is a lot of work, um, but it's worth it because you get to save everything, especially if you do it yourself. You're not paying somebody to do it. Right. And you get all of it. Um, Kim, how old is your son? Because you're saying he's going to uh, get a, you want, he's hopeful to get a deer. But also last week, um, Kim was tuning in uh, with the goat's milk cheese because her son has uh, goats. So I'm like curious to know how old he is to see like at what stage, you know, we're bringing him in here. And if he's what, if, does he watch these with you? Or do you show these to him later? I'm waiting, I don't know. I, uh, internet's so slow that sometimes it's delayed. Anyway, yeah, so for the couple times you're gonna be grinding a year, yeah. these little attachments are perfect. And like I said too, I mean, I, I set up out, I set up side like a pound at a time to grind when I'm going to eat it because I don't want to sit there in front of the grinder and grind two pounds. Right. Four more. Yeah. So this is all that was left off of my deer um, was just a couple of pounds yeah. from everything that we did and everything that we saved. So um, I was hopeful. I was hoping I'd get more though, actually. To I, grind. Yeah, 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 but I mean, we have roasts and stuff. But um, well, the thing is, if you're a good butcher, you can get you know, obviously, uh, you know, they they did a good job with not having scraps. Yeah, so. yeah. So, but I mean, we're I just did an order of ground beef too. So um, I have an order from. Uh, so John and Diane also get uh, milk and beef from where I get my milk, which is part of their farms, which you guys know from last week. Um, but yeah, I did some beef from him, ground beef, and then I did some from Shake Box as well. Yep. So if you want contact information for any of those uh, local farmers, let me know and I can uh, send that over to you. Yeah, it looks really good. Oh, it looks so good, you guys. I'm so excited. Maybe we'll have burgers tonight for dinner. <laughs> oh, that sounds really good. So, oh, head, be oh, you know what? <laughs> The story of the week, though, was my birthday dinner. Do you remember my birthday <laughs> oh, yeah. dinner? Oh, my goodness. That's the story of the week. Poor, the, I call him the mister. So the mister was cooking me birthday dinner, but we had made plans to go see, uh, get ice cream with John and Diane at like 6 o'clock, which is a reasonable time. And uh, the mister let the time get away from him. And so my birthday dinner literally was meatloaf. That's it. Meatloaf. I, I don't know. He was trying to boil potatoes to make mashed potatoes, and it just didn't work out. So I had meat. Well, he can try it again now. I know. Okay, yeah. this looks really good. So that's your finish. This and, looks. You know, it, you know, you package that shrink uh, in the uh, vacuum sealer. It's gonna look like you bought it. 
that looks so good. So, oh my gosh. All right, you guys. So a little bit too, like if you have one of these, um, I mentioned about the fat, um, like the deer fat and, um, you know, you'll get veins and stuff like that, like in the meat. The good thing about these, they're very easy to clean. Um, I want to, because I want to show you the cutting blade and everything since we're here. The little catch. Hey, what here? This is live TV. Oh, this happens. I'm pretty used to this stuff. They're used to getting quiet too sometimes. You gotta have to concentrate on this stuff now. All right. So the cutting plate, like I said, fine in the course. See, you know, you could have done that fine, but with the fat in it, I think it much much better in the course in the course ones we use them. um so that's this is the blade that does the grinding um just small that's it and so like i mentioned earlier about keeping them cold you just get these couple pieces you could put your whole thing in there too because the, the metal uh the metal auger actually this it's a plastic auger but um come across uh, come apart very easily so I mean that's your cleaning you know you take this you clean it it catches a lot of the stuff that you don't want ground up anyway you know you throw that out you wash this you wash that you put it back together so I mean these things are super super simple and that's pretty much it so that's ready the package ready to eat so. all right you guys this is done and thank, thank you thank you for coming over yeah, and doing way. this and all I had to do was talk great <laughs> It worked out really well. All right, next week, I have no idea. I can't keep up from week to week. Next week, something else. Um, I have limited skills, so who knows if I'll be back. Uh, actually, <laughs> I think... Unless we do a real cooking show. But now we're talking, you know, production. Well, I th well they know, and if in case you don't know, the, the Facebook Live series will be ending on um, with our August 8th. That's our last one, um, just because of uh, markets and, and selling and that kind of thing. But... What I'm planning on doing, hopefully, is uh, doing some videos and then just kind of releasing them. And so one of the things I think we should do is have John have Iron Cooking for us. So we're going to get that one going soon, hopefully, and a whole other thing. So, um, yeah, so tune in next week. Um, we're counting down to our last. This is the last of the series, and then we'll just do some more, um, you know, like, more cultivated and not quite so loosey goosey. Um, I like loosey goosey, so there will be some loosey goosey. But um, the video will be on Facebook. It'll be on my blog. It will be on YouTube. So, um, and you can find John and Diane over at Blake Farm on Instagram. All right. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye. Told you.